Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we draw position time graphs in physics. To start off with, here we're going to be looking at a cheetah, and the cheetah is some distance away from the tree along a grassland. And in order to draw a position time graph, first we need to identify this cheetah that is going to be moving. So in order to draw the motion diagram, we're going to assume that this is where the cheetah begins, which we're going to call the zeroth frame, and the cheetah is moving along to the right. We have to indicate the index of each frame, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. From the motion diagram, how we're going to make a position time graph is a little bit strange. So I don't know if you recall the movie Inception, where the whole world, you can see that it's in a different axis. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. OK, so normally, this is how we picture the world. But in Inception, you can see it's sideways. So this is what we're going to be doing for position time graphs. Then we're going to be adding our coordinate system. So we're going to label the position along the vertical axis and the time along the horizontal axis. A quick thing to note is that we're going to be setting the origin to be right where the tree is. So that way it can help us determine the direction. And again, as I mentioned, the vertical axis is going to be our position. So D for position. And the horizontal axis is going to be T for time. To include the units, we could put meters for position and S for seconds for time. OK, so let's just uh, add some labels into our axis so we can have uh, coordinates to play with afterwards. So here I'm going to say that starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And now for my position, again, at the tree, that's going to be 0 meter, so that's our origin. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, it's not the best scale, but you're going to get the main idea from here. Now, how we go from a motion diagram to a position time graph, we're going to rotate, as I mentioned. And now we're going to locate each point with its corresponding time. That's why we needed the index number of each frame. So at time 0, the cheetah is 3 meters to the right, time 0. So we're going to put a pointer. At time 1, the cheetah is 4 meters away from the tree to the right. So we have a new point. At time 2 seconds, the cheetah is 5 meters away. So we have another point, and we continue doing this for the rest of them. Or oh, I should have had a better scale, right? OK, so at time 4 seconds, the cheetah was 7 meters away. So this is our very first position time graph. And here we can get some information from there. So let's try to label it. So at time 0, that's where the cheetah begins. So it's initial position. We could label that as D0. Let's make a legend out here on the side. D0 is our initial position. And any time after that is going to be called D1, D2, D3, and so on, depending on the time that we're considering. So D1, D2, D3, D4, and so on. That's how we label the rest of the positions. Now, if we look at the dots, 
uh, in math, we want to find trends. One way to represent trends is with a trend line or a curve of best fit or the line of best fit. So let's see what happens if we find a trend line. Okay, turned out pretty good. Notice that this trend line is a relationship that you're familiar with from before. It's going to be a linear relationship. So when you're looking at a position time graph, in a position time graph, if the relationship is linear and with a non-zero slope, what kind of motion does the cheetah undertake? Well, we could look back at the very, very beginning motion diagram. Notice that between each second that's going by, more or less, the cheetah's covering the same distance. Well, we could also show that in the graph. In one second, the cheetah cover one meter. In the next second, the cheetah cover one meter. In the next second, the cheetah covers one meter. In the next second, the cheetah covers one meter. So in other words, in each second that goes by, the cheetah covers one meter. This relationship can be thought of as the trend. So this is a constant change in position for a given time interval and it is changing by one meter for every one second. In other words, this is exactly what we defined before as uniform motion. So for uniform motion, there's going to be equal distance cover in the same amount of time. And that's how we're going to be making position time graphs. And I'm going to show you how we can analyze them to get more information in my next example. So please hit like and subscribe and that way you can learn more with your physics teacher.